Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Perhaps this is your first time joining us. We extend a warm welcome to you and trust you're blessed with what you hear today. We wanna to begin with prayer. We wanna to continue to pray for our nation and those that are in leadership. We wanna to continue to pray for our local community and region. We also wanna pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church members in particular. And lastly, we want to remember our brothers and sisters around the world. Perhaps you have a special unspoken request. This is a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you for the abundance of all things. Father, we pray for your continued spirit and word to influence God, the direction of our nation, those that are in leadership. God, our country is in desperate need of a genuine move of God. Father, we also pray for our local community and region and pray that you will open up doors of utterance and opportunity. I pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church uh, this morning. I'm also remembering Brother John Moeller that went through uh, a surgery in Seattle yesterday, having a brain tumor removed. Uh, from his head. We pray uh, for him in Jesus' name. And lastly, Father, we remember our brothers and sisters around the world that you will build a hedge of protection around each and every one of them. We ask all this in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. This morning, I felt like the Holy Ghost put this on my heart and so I want to talk to us for a few minutes about this. I want to start in Matthew chapter number five uh, with the B attitudes, the B attitudes. Let's start in verse number one. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him and he opened his mouth and taught them saying, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Incredible passage of scripture. The very first message, the very first lesson ever taught in the ministry of Jesus here, Sermon on the Mount, very famous uh, passage of scripture. But I want to, I want to just focus on one of these Beatitudes here this morning, and it's verse number six. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. You know, hunger is alive and well in our world today. Um, even in America, we're told that there's many, many people that live very close to the, the poverty line and uh, there are still children and families that go to bed hungry at night. I am told in very current 2021 statistics that there are almost 700 million people that are affected by hunger every single day in the world. 700 million people affected by hunger. And we are talking about hunger that um, unlike in America where you have grocery stores, convenience stores, fast food restaurants, um, there's availability there. There's, there's, you do have food on the shelves, but we are talking about 
in some cases, third world nations, other places where there is no food. There is no food to be found. Uh, just several weeks ago, I was watching and listening to uh, an interview on YouTube with Jordan Peterson and a woman that escaped North Korea. And she was talking about her family and their whole purpose of existence was to find something to eat. That's all, that's, that's what she could remember her family doing. They got up, she said they ate bugs. She said there were a particular times of the year that they actually looked forward to like springtime and summertime because they knew that there would be more bugs. And this was, this was just her life. Her life was dependent upon them finding food. And as we've already mentioned, there are hundreds of millions of people that are in a crisis mode over food. Scientists tell us that when there is no food, there is malnutrition. Malnutrition is more than just a word that talks about not being able to get enough food or, or the basic type of vitamins intakes uh, into your body every day. But it is talking about the effects on the body. And they're saying that in nations where malnutrition has has ravaged the population for, for many, many, many years. It actually affects the stature. It affects the bone condition of a human being. And it affects, affects the physique and the overall health of a person. Uh, I, I, think that, I think that hunger is a horrible thing, that people get up and, and the only thing on their mind is, is, to, is to look for bugs to eat or, or to look for something to eat. But even as, as horrific and horrendous as that condition is, Jesus made the statement that blessed are those that hunger and thirst. How can somebody be blessed that is hungry and thirsty? We've already talked about the physical things, malnutrition and, and people that die have, have uh, a very shortened life capacity and ex expectation to live. The quality of their life is absolutely, there is no quality of life when you're hungry. So how can a person be blessed if they are hungry and thirsty? Jesus already gives us the answer because they are hungry and thirsty after righteousness. They are hungry and thirsty to be right with God. They are hungry and thirsty to be right with themselves. They are hungry and thirsty to be right with others. And that's really at the nucleus of being right, is that when we are right with God, now we have the resource to become right with ourselves and, and right with others. And it's, it's first vertical and then it's horizontal. And so to those in our world that are truly hungry and thirsty after righteousness, you are blessed. Because Jesus promises that that type of hunger will be satisfied. Jesus promises that that type of thirst will be satisfied. And so an individual that is black, an individual that is, that is hungering and thirsting to be right with God. Maybe you're uh, watching this this morning. You're going, you know, I just feel like something's amiss. I don't, I, something's disconnected. I'm not right. I'm, I'm disoriented. I don't, I need, I need to get into alignment. When we talk about righteousness, we talk about alignment. And when an individu individual is in alignment with God, there is a flowing of resources. The Bible teaches us in the book of Psalms how good and precious it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the oil that is on the head of Aaron that flows down. When people are in alignment, when people are, are in that, that alignment with righteousness, they're right with God, they're right with themselves. How does a person do that? A person does that by repenting. 
A person does that by having a daily consecrated walk with God, where we are constantly in that alignment and we are made righteous through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. It's a big deal. Revelation chapter number three gives us a haunting picture. If you're a person that believes in the chronological interpretation of Revelation chapter two and three, talking about the seven churches being seven definable periods of time throughout the church age, it would clearly place us in the Laodicean age. And Laodicea's sin was they were rich and increased with goods and had need of nothing. There was no hunger. There was no thirst. They did not know they were naked. They did not know they were miserable. They did not know they were wretched because Jesus was on the outside. You're blessed if you hunger for the right things. You are blessed if you are thirsting after the right things because you will be filled. God bless you. Thank you for joining us here this morning. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.